top of the world and now I'm living And the good just gets better, keeps a giving Not even close to the end, it's just beginning Life is getting lighter while the days are getting brighter, yeah Hi, it's Ann Perry and today we're going to be offering you the second in a series of nine videos I have created specifically for the Master Number 11 community. So if you're a Master Number 11 and you'd like to know who the perfect match is for you, that's what I'm talking about. So today we're going to be talking about the Master Number 11 and the Life Path Number 2. So you might be saying, well, you know, the 11 is a 2 because of 1 and 1 equals 2. Well, that's true, but you're a master vibration, okay? And you guys love companionship. You love to make sure that you're connected with people. You love to have loving relationships. So are you really compatible with a similar life path number of the two? Aren't you just a little bit curious? All right, let's go find out. So first of all, what does the master number 11 need? Now I know I'm repeating myself because this is a series of nine, but I can't be sure that all of you have actually watched the other video. So I'm going to repeat myself. So just deal with it for a minute, will you? <laughs> okay. So quickly, I'm going to go through and explain that the master number 11s, they need to control their environment. Okay. You guys are very sensitive to your surroundings. You're very sensitive to the people you spend time with. You're very sensitive to the color that is in the room that you're sleeping in. Uh, you're sensitive to the type of foods you eat, the sound that you hear. Everything around you is sensory because you're sensitive. You're a master vibration. So it makes sure that you understand that it's all about the vibration running a little bit high for you guys. So you like to have a peaceful and harmonious atmosphere. You're not really interested in somebody who's going to be in your face all the time because you kind of like your downtime. So you also need to be well supported because you need to explore your potential, your creative potential. Remember, you guys are here. 11s are here to um, explore the creative potential and share it with someone else so you can inspire them through that, right? And, and you need to gain your confidence in that area. So uh, we need somebody who's going to support you to be able to do that. You're looking for somebody who's a loyal partner because loyalty is extremely important to you, a romantic partner because that's really important to you as well, romance, and someone who is sensitive to the arts because you really love music, you love uh, the written word, the spoken word, theater, that sort of thing, and you want somebody who's strong, not, not you know, you don't want somebody who, who's, who's a weakling, um, but you want someone who's reasonably strong but not too domineering because you can't deal with too much animosity, too much aggression, that sort of thing. So let's talk about the life path number two. Okay, so the two has similar needs to what the 11 does, of course, because the 11 is a two and so is the two. But the 20 slash two, there's only two ways to be a two, right? You can be 11 two or you can be a, a um, 20 slash two. So um, the 20 slash two has more emphasis on the two energy rather than the emphasis on the one energy that the 11s do. You might want to check out the, uh, the video that I did on uh, the meaning of the number zero. Um, and I'll put the link up there for you so that you can find it because it might help to explain that a little bit better. Um, someone who can accept their sensitive side without seeing it as a threat. Okay, now remember that the 11 energy is kind of interesting because it's got both the masculine and the feminine energy in it. So we've got two ones, which are the masculine masculine component in an 11. And we have the number two, which is the feminine component. And the, the 11s have a bit of a challenge because they're trying to balance both sides of that, right? So um, we need somebody who can accept um, this, their sensitive side without seeing it as a threat. So sometimes um, the twos can be a little bit intimidated by the 11s, believe it or not, because the 11s, again, they're struggling with that mas masculine side versus the feminine side. The 20 slash two, this is somebody who is really looking for someone who can invest a lot of time into the relationship. They really do need partnership. Um, they need a non-confrontational type environment and they need to be able to support their partners uh, to satisfy their needs to be of service. So um, either way, if you're an 11 or whether you're a 2, you need to be able to um, support your partner's interest in satisfying their needs to be of service because at the end of the day, the 11s and the 2s both need to be of service. Okay, so what do each of you bring to the relationship? Well, the master number 11s, they bring compassion and sensitivity. They have a real interest in their spiritual selves. Um, creativity, they're exceedingly creative people because they've got that double one energy, remember? Um, understanding, they're really great listeners, loyal, uh, inspiring, they are passionate people, and they really have a love of romance. So if you're not interested in romance, don't be hooking up with an 11. Uh, need for partnership. The life path number two, 
they have an appreciation of the Yelevin's interest in the arts, for sure. Um, they're peacekeepers who maintain balance in a relationship. They're, they're really, um, they're very good at maintaining balance. The ones, again, they struggle with that masculine energy versus the feminine energy, so sometimes they kind of don't know where they fit, whereas the two energy is a little bit more in touch with who they are as a two, if that makes sense. The same qualities of the 11 without the stress of the soul's contract. Remember that the 11 comes with a contract. It's an agreement that you sign prior to incarnating into this lifetime that says, I'm going to do something really quite amazing in this lifetime. I don't necessarily know what it is. Thank you for the updates thing. <laughs> Whatever that was. I don't know how to stop those. So sorry about that. Um, so the 11s... Um, the 11s do come with a contract, and the contract kind of keeps you under the gun all the time wondering, am I doing the right thing? Am I really doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Because I'm really not 100% certain that that's what I'm supposed to be doing. There's got to be something better. Where the twos tend to be a little bit more grounded, they, they pretty much know what they're supposed to be doing. Um, they're sensitive, you know, they're intuitive. There are a lot of things that the 11s are, but they don't have that um, pressure of the contract hanging over their heads. They're great mediators. They really know how to find peace and harmony in a situation. They're the ones that are running around, as the Elevens probably did too, as kids, you know, if there's an argument going on in the house, it's like, you go over there and you just play nice. You know, and you go over there and you play nice. Even in the work environment, you know, or your home environment, um, the twos are the peacekeepers. Um, so they're great mediators. They have better patience than that of the Eleven because, again, they don't have that contract that they're trying to fulfill. Uh, they're all about loyalty and devotion, so they'll never disappoint you in that way. Again, they're romantic, same as the Elevens are. Um, and they have sensitivity to the needs of others, often at the expense of their own needs. So the life path number two is sometimes going to be more of, a, of an obsessive giver. You know, they're the ones that really want to be of service to other people, even more so than what the Elevens are. So let's take a look at the negative aspects to the Eleven and also to the life path number two. Now, as you know, if you've watched any of my videos, you know that I'm not about the negative side of anything. But we do have to recognize that there's a negative side and a positive side to each number. And because we have, we all have life path numbers, we have to explore the negative sides if we're going to look at each other realistically. Okay. So somebody who has the 11 master number uh, is going to be someone who's very hypersensitive, sometimes um, even overly sensitive, sometimes manipulative with their sensitivity, right? Um, they're people pleasers. They give to excess. They get very frustrated with their position in life because they're always looking for something bigger because they never feel like they're exactly where they want to be. Um, they always feel like there's, you know, something bigger, something more. Um, they have a real need for partnership. They can be a little bit smothering um, because they really have this incredible need to be one of two people, remember? 11 is one of two people. Sets unrealistic standards for themselves. These guys set the bar really, really high, and that comes from the fact that they have incredible amounts of cellular memory, and the cellular memory causes them to intuitively know that they've done something much bigger in a previous lifetime. So in this lifetime, sometimes they just don't feel good enough, and they don't feel like they're doing what they're supposed to be doing or living up to their potential. And because of that, they can suffer depression um, due to their self-perceived failure. Now, the word depression is kind of an interesting word, right? Because when we think about uh, the word depressed, okay, you can think of a thumb being down onto something and depressing into something, you know, a tongue depressor, um, you know, when you're making thumbnail cookies, depressing into the cookie dough, that sort of thing. So it's something holding you back, holding you down. And half the time it's yourself, right, because of these crazy expectations you hold. Now, when we look at the life path number two, um, these people also hypersensitive. Um, they, they give to an extreme and they suffer burnout because of it. Um, the twos, remember, they're a little bit more affirmative of the direction they're supposed to be going. They don't question if they're doing something as big as they should be doing like the 11s do. I'm not saying that you don't question it at times, but I'm going to say you don't have that huge um, hang up over your head. Uh, they have a greater need to be with their partner than the 11s do. Remember, the 11 has the two ones. What do we know about the one energy? The one is independent, right? So the, the 11s often struggle with, do I want to be by myself or do I want to be in a partnership? Where do I fit? Kind of thing. Where the twos, no, they want to be in a partnership. Um, so they can become codependent quite easily. They're, they can be overly shy, fearing social interaction, um, as can the 11s for sure. But the, uh, the two... Remember, the zero in the 20 slash 2 emphasizes the quality of the number 2. We're not looking at the number 1s here when we're looking at a 20 slash 2. We're looking at the 20 slash 2, 2, 0 slash 2. 
So they can be a little overly shy, fearing social interaction. Um, and they lack the ability to set healthy emotional boundaries. So sometimes they become a doormat really quickly. And then because of that, they can become a martyr, resentful, and bitter. Okay, so are the 11s and the 11 twos compatible? Well, you know what? There's so many components to decide whether we're compatible or not. I mentioned in the other video that I am a life path number of seven and my partner is a life path number of nine. So typically that is what we would consider to be a bit of a challenging match. However, um, it works because our other core numbers, there's four core, core numbers, right? So the other core numbers are compatible. So that's why it works for us. So you can't just look at the life path number. However, I got to say, it does give you a pretty good quick uh, glimpse as to whether you're going to have um, a struggling relationship or one that's just going to easily flow. So you want to ask yourself this. Can I accept that a life path number two will likely have a greater need for partnership than I do. In comes the possibility that you might get smothered. They may not share the same interest in the arts as I do. Um, they'll have a need to nurture me and to be with me more than I need. They may not be able to understand that often I suffer from frustration because I'm not where I feel I need to be in life. Are they going to be able to rise to the occasion and deal with that? I've got a greater need for the spotlight than the 20 slash 2 does. And will that be a problem? So those are some things that you might want to ask yourself uh, as you're considering a relationship with a life path number two. Um, I'm, this is not about whether it's a good thing or whether it's a bad thing. This is simply about opening your eyes to really take a look at each individual life path number, this being the number two, and um, asking yourself to discern uh, the differences between the life path numbers before you get yourself involved in this relationship. So that is it. I hope that you'll stay in touch. I hope that you'll contact me at annperrynumerologist.com. I have a blog there that I write in. I have uh, all kinds of information on numerology. So hopefully you'll tune in for that. There's a newsletter you can sign up for. I have some online courses coming up. I am so excited about this. They're not quite ready yet, but they're getting there. And uh, I will be uh, announcing that very soon. So if you want to uh, be on top of that and know when they're coming out, make sure you sign up for that newsletter. And... Uh, Facebook. I'm on Facebook every single day. I post something new about numerology. So if you want to stay in touch with that, that would be great. And I sure hope that you'll subscribe because I like to keep in touch. I really do try very hard to answer all of your questions. If I miss you, I do apologize. Send me another message. No problem. Uh, but thanks very much, guys. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care. Have a wonderful day. Bye for now.